It's already 12.01, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, I hope you can hear me. Please feel free to open up the chat if you have any questions. Feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat box, and I will go ahead and answer them accordingly. So feel free to interrupt whenever. So hope you can hear me. Again, my name is Horace. I am the event host at Horseations, where we offer these free monthly mixology courses for um, anyone that is interested and where I just explore the many topics of the cocktail and mixology world because I just have a huge interest in it. So feel free to join along in the conversation whenever. So first off, happy National Rum Day. Today, actually, the 10th of July is Rum Day. So I hope you have your rum drink of choice. If you don't, now it's time to start um, because we are going to make a mojito, which Coincidentally, tomorrow is actually National Mojito Day, 7-Eleven. So skip that Slurpee, don't get that from 7-Eleven. Instead, make yourself a mojito, pretty simple. So let's just go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen so you can see my countertop. So let's start off with a mojito, a very classic drink. It is actually built in the glass itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a highball glass. And the first thing you want to do is grab simple syrup which is easily made by just simmering one part water, one part sugar. And then we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce straight into the glass. So there's really no need to have a mixing tin to create this drink. It's super, super easy. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab our mint leaves. So ideally have them fresh and we're gonna save a bouquet so that we can use it for our garnish later. I like to have it like extra minty. So I like to pull off like 10 big mint leaves and just drop it straight in. There we go. I can already smell the mintiness. It's amazing. Go, boom, great. All right, so as all, always, you want to have something to muddle with, which is why we add the simple syrup first so that the oils can go into the syrup. And so what we're going to do is we're actually not going to muddle muddle. We're actually just going to lightly press the mint. Now, reason for this is one, of course, if you're making this for a significant other or your friends or family, you don't want bits of mint stuck in your teeth, right? That's kind of unattractive. Um, another thing is you don't want to pulverize the mint because what happens is then it starts excreting bitter oils. And that's not what you want. You just want the aromatic mintiness of the mint, not the bitterness, because a lot of plants have that defensive mechanism where they excrete bitters to deter uh, predators that will eat them. So that's the same concept for mint as well. So we just pressed it, you can give it a whiff. I can already smell a lot of that mint in there. And then we're gonna just go ahead and add in straight our lime juice, which is three quarters of an ounce straight in. And then next, we're gonna go ahead and add our rum. Rum that I'm using is everyone's standard. Well, this is just, uh, um, it's not really everyone's standard, but it's a well-known rum out there, Bacardi from uh, Cuba. A very light blended rum that uh, is easy to sip and goes really well with cocktails because it does not, the taste does not overpower the other ingredients in the cocktail. So we're just gonna add, add two ounces straight in and put that to the side. And now the next thing you wanna do is add your crushed ice. Now I don't have a fancy crushed ice machine. So if you don't have that at home either, you could use a plastic bag or use what's called a Lewis ice bag. It goes for about $10 from what I remember off of Amazon. And you just go ahead and just add your ice chunks straight in. And what it does is once you smash it up with a hammer, it adds a little bit of flair too, which is kind of exciting if you're doing this for a party trick. This bag is great for wicking away the moisture that the ice creates. So we're just gonna add a couple cubes of ice in there. And then what you're gonna do is use that provided hammer and just mash it up. So again, if you do not have a hammer or one of these bags at home, you can use a rolling pin with a plastic bag. Works totally fine. 
And all you do is just dump it in. Now, fun fact about the mojito when ordering this at a bar, you can see how much effort it takes for a bar bartender to make this. Which is why actually this is one of the most hated drinks for bartenders to make. Not that they don't love it, it's just that it just takes so much effort. And um, yeah, make sure to tip your bartender well. They do make you a mojito because they are amazing. And so of course, what you can do is mix it like this to get all the ingredients mixed up. Another method you can do, which I learned when I bar back, is you can take a tin or another uh, glassware of some sort. You can actually pour all the ingredients in. And so what this does, is it mixes up the mint and the, um, yeah, it just mixes up the mint so that it looks better for presentation purposes. And you just pour it back in. Neat trick, right? So the mint, uh, I didn't do so well, but you can see that it's actually not all stuck on the bottom this time. So I'm gonna have to add a couple pieces of ice on the top. Just to top it off. And then, of course, we top off with our sparkling water. Make sure your sparkling water is ice cold before you add it because you don't want it to, the warm sparkling water to melt the ice and it further dilutes the drink more. And so you just give it a little twirl and there you go. This is your mojito. And of course, don't forget the bouquet that I saved. What you can do now with the bouquet, this is a little top of the camera, so I'm gonna set this to the side, is you have your mint. A good technique is to either lightly slap it or you can either just whack it on the palm of your hand, just like this. It just lightly creates a little of the mint aromas, gets it out, and you can just smell it 10 times more than if you just place mint without slapping it on there. And there you go, this is your mojito. It's a tall for the camera, but this is your mojito, just like that. I'm gonna take a sip and let's bring myself back into the camera so you can see me. Great. So mojito is great, amazing for a warm summer day. It is summer right now. And the mint, what it does is once you put your nose to it, because your nose compromises at least, I believe 80 or 90% of the taste that you perceive, that mintiness just really pops. And so let's just set that to the side right now. And so another thing about the mojito is that you can actually add and play around with your syrup. So if you didn't want just simple syrup, which is just sugar and water, you can go ahead and infuse some strawberries in there. So you get a strawberry mojito. And then you can simmer some pineapple, you can simmer some passion fruit, just anything. You can get really creative with the mojito and then you get all those like fun flavor mojitos. So it's it's not really rocket science. It's pretty just like mix, mix and match, which is really exciting. So anyways, while we sip on our mojitos here, let me just talk a little bit about rum, the underrated spirit. So rum, you don't hear it talked a lot about. A lot of people say, I collect whiskey, I collect tequila, tequila shots, gin, uh, mix and match. Vodka, of course, is a party favorite. However, rum is not really often talked about. Brandy is another story. So. The thing about rum is that it's just, there's just so much, you can't really categorize rum because they weren't really, there weren't any rules to really set rum in place, which is why um, there's just no categories. Rum is just basically made up of sugarcane, any products from sugarcane. So it can be the juice, it can be the syrup, and it can be the molasses. Now the molasses, of course, is what you get from majority of the rum, but sugarcane juice can create what you call rum agricole. Uh, which is a different kind of rum um, that uh, just is from the pure sugarcane juice. Rum is created from sugarcane, which grows uh, and originated from Papua New Guinea. Um, it's now found in Brazil and Caribbean, and it grows extremely fast. And uh, but the thing about sugarcane is, is very difficult to harvest, and so um, unfortunately and very sadly, sugar, the in sugarcane industry was built on the backs of slavery because at the time European settlers um, took in slaves to do the work for them and um, these slaves in the early beginning it was they were very abundant and so if we're in Barbados for example it was two slaves to one European in the 18th century so um, because of them that's how the industry started unfortunately now 
that aside, um, rum itself, so the sugar is made by pressing the cane into the mill, and then they boil that juice until the sugar crystallizes. Now you get leftovers from that, which is what you call molasses. And there was an abundance of molasses back in the day. Um, the Europeans had no idea what to do with the molasses. So one person had a bright idea. Why don't we try distilling it? And so because of that, there comes the rum. So pretty much molasses, uh, it traces back to the Caribbean, mostly in Barbados. Um, and in, uh, it was originally distilled in copper pot stills. And this eventually evolved into double distillation to get rid of further impurities. Because of course, as you, you know, as, as I spoke earlier, that molasses is just a byproduct of what they were trying to get the sugar crystals. They weren't, they didn't really care for the molasses. It was actually considered trash or junk. Um, so in that time, New England also created, uh, of course they colonized. And at the time um, they tried to create rum in their country, but of course, they went and colonized the Caribbean areas because in the Caribbean, uh, the rum always aged faster. And so with aging faster, you get a faster product and you're able to sell, um, sell the rum much quicker, of course, right? You get more product because of the climate and the climate made a huge difference. And of course, Jamaica down the line, they joined the competition uh, because it was another British colony. Now, when you hear all of this, you're probably thinking like when you think of rum, you probably think of pirates, right? Well, that's actually true. Back in the day, um, in the 17th, 18th century, pirates were a heavy drinkers of rum. They loved the, that was their drink of choice. It um, they imbibed it a lot. And so what they would do is they would actually commit acts of piracy um, on the uh, British uh, trade routes, um, a lot of the um, ships were overtaken by pirates and then they were all the spoils the rum barrels everything they would take it and go on down to port royal jamaica where it became pirate headquarters and so this is where the pirates would enjoy their lives of spoils and riches and drink the night away now aside from pirates they weren't the only ones drinking it of course uh, as you know europeans love rum as well but also they eventually transitioned that to the royal navy because the Royal Navy back in the day, they liked to consume alcohol, of course, in general. So they had beer in the day, beer and water. Now, when you're out at sea for a long time, you can think about it like, well, beer is drunk really fast, right? They're bored, they have nothing else to do on their off time, they just drink beer. So it's all gone, uh-oh. Well, what else can you drink? Water. Well, water doesn't last very long out at sea, and so it goes bad, and there's cases of scurvy. And so with that, their solution was rum. And so rum rations were given out to sailors at the time, and um, to make it a little bit more palpable, they could add either water or lime juice and sugar, which created the daiquiri, which I will create later on down, uh, maybe in a few minutes after I go through a little bit more history. And uh, if you're talking about America now, fast forward in colonial America, the common way to drink rum was through punch. And uh, punch was a very simple cocktail recipe, which is basically a good saying of one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, and four of weak. There was a very popular saying and people would follow this template to create countless variations of punch that you can think of. There's a great book by, uh, I believe, uh, David Wondrick called Punch. You can check out if you're interested. And there's just a whole plethora of punch out there. Now, you fast forward during America. If my uh, fifth class, I talked about American whiskey, bourbon, right? That was on the rise. And whiskey actually overtook rum and caused a decline because back then in the war, 1812, and then the free, the, the freeing of the slaves, you had nobody to work on those sugar plantations. And with that, Europeans didn't want to work. And so there was a huge decline. So a lot of distillers actually went to distilling whiskey instead of rum. They just stopped with the rum. And so it was just a huge decline. There were also taxes involved. Uh, with the tax man always attacked them, you know, with the, um, uh, the molasses taxes out there. They, they just couldn't deal with it. So they just stuck with whiskey and transition. But then there was a flip eventually with prohibition in, in, in the 1900s, which helped boost up the sales of rum because a lot of the Americans, they couldn't get their alcohol in America. They fled to Jamaica, they fled to Cuba, places where rum was imbibed so much and the prohibition did not affect them there. And so prohibition did help the spread of rum in a sense. And at, during this time too, there was the 
if you remember from my fifth course, we talked about the continuous stills, um, which uh, Anus Cafe patented. And with that, it was a lot of faster production of rum, lighter, bl lighter blends of rum, which were not as funky as Jamaican rum is known for, the pot stills. And so it catered to a lot of wider audience. And so with that, that's where you get uh, blends like Bacardi or uh, plantation rum. And so eventually the taste catered to the lighter, more floral, more uh, not as heavy on the tongue taste. And so, of course, now you get the cocktail renaissance, um, which helped with the explosion of rum, which is pretty crazy because between two th year 2000, 2010, there was a 40% increase of purchase or rum bottle purchases. And so bartenders just wanted to understand the spirit a lot more. And so with that, this cocktail renaissance is still happening to this day. It's just very celebrated and as part of the Caribbean culture and lots of rum tastings and shows now pop up here and there. And there's just uh, so much to explore with rum. So one book I would recommend you check out if you are interested in rum and tiki culture. So tiki culture, I will get into on in our next class. Feel free to sign up if you are interested um, on tiki and Mai Tais and how the tiki culture brought about um, the popularity of rum. You can check out the book Smuggler's Cove um, it's a great book to read if you are interested in rum. But let's take a pause here. This is pretty much a brief history and rundown of rum that I could provide. There is so much out there that I could talk about, but let's just get into creating some cocktails with rum because today is rum day. I created the mojito, so we're going to go ahead and create its big brother, the daiquiri. Awesome. Great. So the daiquiri is a very, very simple cocktail. It comprises of just three ingredients, very similar to mojito, which is just rum, sweetener, and sour, which that's pretty much it. So you just grab a shaker tin right here. You grab your simple syrup, and I'm gonna go ahead and add three quarters ounce of simple syrup into my tin. So you can see this is very, very similar to the mojito. Now the daiquiri is used to test new bartenders when they're on the job because it's a very simple cocktail to make, but it's very easy to mess up because if you don't understand the sour template, you don't understand your ingredients, how much sugar you put in, how much lime you put in, how sweet or how sweet or how sour the lime is that you're using, it might cause the daiquiri to be off balance. So for me, I prefer the daiquiris on the more tart side. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one ounce, but usually people do add three quarters ounce of lime juice as well. So I'm gonna add one ounce in there. Great. And then the rum I'm going to use is Plantation Three Stars. Now this is a very affordable rum that you can get in uh, most liquor stores out there. It is a blend of Jamaican, Barbados, and Trinidad rum. And it's uh, same as, well, not same as Bacardi, but I would say its taste is a lot more complex than Bacardi, but it does not overpower the other ingredients in a drink. So it goes really well with the daiquiri. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two ounces of that. Get this out of the camera. All right, put my plantation to the side and that's it. You're just going to shake it up now. So grab a couple ice cubes. Just put it in the shaker tin and shake it up. Ooh, sorry about that. All right. So we go ahead and grab our glassware. And then we're just going to strain it in. And so you want to double strain this because you don't want ice chunks into your drink. And there we go. So let me clean up for a second. And there we go. We have the Zachary. So we need to finish this off with a garnish. So all I'm gonna do is add a lime wedge. 
So usually with a lime wedge, what happens is it symbolizes that you can add a little bit more citrus in there because lime wedges can be squeezed. Um, this signifies to the drinker that they can add more. They have the choice to add more citrus if they want and mess with the balance. So this is the daiquiri. Very, very fruity. I love plantation rum. It's got notes of honey too, which is what is I find super interesting. All right. So that is the daiquiri. Now there are many versions of the daiquiri out there. I'm not talking about the frozen blended kind of daiquiris you might find in Las Vegas or like some other towns because those aren't really craft cocktails or the original daiquiris. Um, a lot of bent bartenders actually, craft bartenders don't like it when you drink those or prefer those because those are heavy on the sugar. I'm talking about the Hemingway daiquiri. Now, I don't know if you've heard of this one before, but it was created in honor of Ernest Hemingway who was diabetic because he was diabetic. Of course, he could not, he did not like sugar. And so instead, uh, what he drank, what he used was uh, liqueurs. And so instead of our simple syrup, we're gonna go ahead and use a Lixardo, which is a maraschino cherry liqueur. So the simple, the sour template still exists as you will about, you will about to see. But first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and add my lime juice, which is, three quarters again. So you see with the sour template, you can really play around with um, different types of cocktails. Now I'm not going to go much into cocktail making here uh, because these classes are just a simple exploration of this world of spirits out there where I do make a cocktail or two. But we're going to go ahead and add three quarters ounce of lime. And now we're gonna add our maraschino liqueur, which is probably the, one of the most popular um, maraschino liqueurs out there, Luxardo. Uh, we just add half an ounce. And then we're gonna go ahead and add grapefruit juice. Pretty interesting, right? So great grapefruit's known to add a little bit of bitterness to the drinks. Um, if you uh, remember from previous classes that I mentioned, bitters is actually a critical component of cocktails. You might hear bitters and might deter yourself away from making cocktails or putting it in cocktails, but bitters actually adds a type of, um, it, it stimulates the senses in a way. But grapefruits can also be sweet which is why we only add half an ounce because we don't want to add too much sweetener to overpower the sour of the lime juice. And again, we're gonna go ahead and add our plantation rum. Two ounces. Straight. And what I'm going to do is finish off with a little saline solution. So you can add a pinch of salt or have saline solution at hand, which is basically a very concentrated salt solution. So two drops is more than enough because this is extremely salty. And so just like cooking, what salt does is just really opens up and masks a little bit of the unwanted um, bitterness flavors that you don't like. And um, just like cooking, it uh, does open up the cocktail quite a bit. You can go ahead and look up more about salt in cocktails if you look up Dave Arnold, if you are interested. So again, we're gonna go ahead and just pop it in and shake it right up. This is our Hemingway Daiquiri. Grab a, another coupe glass and double strain in. So I will set this to the side because it's the last cocktail I will make. And then what I'm gonna do, but you can add a grapefruit wedge to your cocktail. So first you wanna squeeze the oils from the peel just like this. So you grab a hearty piece and just squeeze just like that. And then you get the oils all over the cocktail, the aromas. Feel free to drop this in if you want. I choose not to just because Grapefruit peel is extremely bitter compared to the other um, citrus fruits out there. And you put it into the drink, uh, that bitterness will 
um, end up getting into drink over time, especially if you don't down the drink right away. So that is it. This is our Hemingway Daiquiri. So I'm going to go ahead and stop share so you see my face. I'm going to go ahead and have a drink. So right away with the Hemingway Daiquiri, you get the maraschino liqueur. It just pops instantly. A sweet cherry. The, great, the grapefruit I picked that wasn't strong enough. So I don't taste much grapefruit in here, sadly. But for this one, the regular daiquiri, ooh. So I still prefer the, the standard daiquiri over the Hemingway, but the Hemingway does add a layer of uh, flavor, a layer of uh, complication and interest. Hmm, interesting. But of course you can always go back to your standard mojito anytime you want. Because it is the summer, so sip away with the mojitos. So with that, that pretty much concludes the course. Thank you for, again for joining. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to type it in the chat box. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Again, uh, I will put this video up eventually on YouTube for people that missed it. And if you want to refer back, the ingredients will be listed on the description. Again, my name is Horace. I do host these uh, every month and feel free to sign up, no cost needed for free on uh, Eventbrite. Um, I'm happy to go ahead and have conversation if you would like or any sort of interaction in regarding cocktails and the mixology world. Of course, you're welcome. Thank you very much for joining. I will be around for another minute or two. If you do have questions or comments, I am happy to address them. I hope you enjoy the summer. Sip away on those mojitos. Mojitos are excellent cocktails. But yes, don't forget. So next session, I will be talking about the Mai Tai and the Tiki cocktails in general. So I'll be talking about rum again. So feel free to sign up if you are interested. You're welcome. Yes, the mojito is a, a very great refreshing cocktail. So a tip for everyone here, if you would like to make a flavored mojito, so what you would do with the simple syrup, you take one part sugar, one part water, put in a saucepan on low heat, and then you just put in like, you wanna make a strawberry mojito, put in some strawberries in there, fresh strawberries, of course, never use any juice or any of that. They have added sugars in there. It'll throw off the balance. And then you just kind of simmer it until the syrup turns the right color that you want or you to your taste, go ahead and taste it away cool down and there you go you got your strawberry syrup you can do that with pineapple you can do it with it's it's amazing you can you're welcome yeah you can fruit syrup really easy you can make it anyway so you can be the star of the show and your next party or you host the gathering or whatnot and mojitos are a crowd pleaser let me tell you it's already 12 31 we're one minute over so uh thank you again for joining again my name is horace uh i will see you hopefully next time when we talk about tiki cocktails um in august so enjoy the summer enjoy your weekend and see you later thank you